Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice functional equation from India. We have f of x plus y plus xy equals f of x times f of y. And we're going to be solving for or finding an expression for the function as f of x. So first of all, let me tell you, this is a function from real numbers to real numbers. So for all x, y element of real numbers, this equation must be true. So let's go ahead and do the following. We have this interesting equation. One of the things that you should always check is, you know, replacing x and y with certain values such as 0 and 1 and negative 1 and so on and so forth. So we're going to do the same thing here. First of all, let's replace both x and y with 0. And that gives us the following. 0 plus 0, which is f of 0, plus 0 equals f of 0 times f of 0 f of 0 plus 0 is the same as f of 0 because 0 is the identity for addition and f of 0 multiplied by itself just gives us f of 0 squared. Now how do you solve th this kind of equation? Well first of all notice that f of 0 is a constant so let's go ahead and call it c. So and we get something like c squared equals c. Hopefully you see what I see here. Put the c on the left factor and you'll get the solutions. So C is either 0 or 1. But what is C? C is f of 0. So we have two options for f of 0 and what we're going to do is we're going to look at each case. So if C is 0 that implies f of 0 is 0 because C is f of 0. If f of 0 is 0, I, I, I'm going to use an if statement here, here because I want to know what the consequences are, right? If f of 0 is equal to 0, I want to write my equation uh, one more time, f of x plus y plus xy equals f of x times f of y. Okay, now we do know that f of 0 is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and having known that, let's go ahead and replace y with 0, only y with 0, okay, in the original equation. So that gives us f of x plus 0 equals f of x times f of 0. Now this is nice, we didn't uh, mess with x yet, because I want to get an expression for f of x, so that's why I'm, uh, I'm leaving the x alone for now. But notice that f of 0, we already know that f of 0 is equal to 0, so we can go ahead and plug it in here, but f of x times 0 is always 0, so from here we get f of x equals 0 for all x element of real numbers. So this is kind of like a constant function where all the outputs are going to be equal to 0. But here's the problem with that. So if this happens, if this is true, then I can go ahead and since I can use any real numbers, let's go ahead and use x equals 1 and y equals 1 in this equation, okay? So from here we get f of 2 plus 1 equals f of 1 squared. Now we do know that f of x is always 0, identically 0, so this is 0 and this is 0 because f of 1 is 0, f of 2 is 0, f of anything is 0. So now we get something like 0 plus 1 equals 0 or 1 equals 0. Nonsense, garbage, right? Forget about it. This means assuming f of 0 equals 0 lead us to a contradiction, therefore proof by contradiction, this can't be happening. So f of 0 does not equal 0, we know that. So what's the other option? We said that f of 0 is either 0, which is c by the way, or 1. So now we got to use the second option since the first option failed. c equals 1. This means f of 0 equals 1, and let's proceed with that. So suppose, suppose f of 0 equals 1. Now let's rewrite the equation one more time, f of x plus y. You're going to do this very many times when you're solving functional equations. Don't worry about it. It's just going to help you writing it over and over. So if f of 0 is equal to 1, what can I do? Okay, I want to replace x with something, okay? How about 1 and negative 1? And the reason behind that is, you'll see in a little bit, I want to get f of 0 here. Make sense? <laughs> Good. So when you replace x and y with opposite values, you get f of 0 minus 1 equals 
f of 1 times f of negative 1. This is nice because not only you're getting f of 0 on the left hand side, but also f of 0 being equal to 1 gives you a 0 on the left hand side. Because if f of 0 is equal to 1, f of 0 minus 1 equals 1 minus 1, and that is equal to 0. Make sense? Hopefully it does. So this is equal to 0. 0 equals f of 1 times f of negative 1. Awesome. This is really nice because having a product equal to 0 is super duper nice because then any of these factors can be 0. I'm not saying both have to be, but at least one of them has to be 0, which is nice. If uh, the product was equal to 2 or 1, unless you're looking for integer values, you wouldn't really uh, get anything helpful. Anyway, so we got this equation. What does that mean? If this doesn't make sense to you, I'm going to kind of uh, flip the equation and write it like this. So hopefully this makes more sense because we're kind of used to reading from left to right. Obviously, some languages we read from right to left or sometimes upside down. But in general, and at least for the English language, right, we read from left to right. So this is easier to interpret. Anyways, we have a product that's zero we have to consider two cases. This means either f of 1 is 0 or f of negative 1 is 0. And or includes both. Okay? If, if f of 1 is 0. Okay, let's start with the first one. First case. This is first case. This is second case. If f of 1 is equal to 0, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to rewrite my original equation f of x plus y. I told you we were going to keep writing this, right? Equals f of x, f of y. I know that f of 1 is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and replace y with 1, okay? Just y with 1. Why is that helpful? You'll see in a little bit. That's going to give you f of 1 here, and that is 0, so that's going to be good. Replace y with 1 and leave the x alone, meaning x equals x. So that's going to give me f of x plus 1 plus x times 1, which is x, equals f of x times f of y, which is f of 1. But f of 1 is 0, therefore this gives me f of x plus 1 plus x equals 0, and from here f of x plus 1 can be written as negative x. Now you can easily replace x with x minus 1, if that bothers you, replace x with y minus 1 and then replace y with x, whatever you do, but this implies f of x equals negative of x minus 1, which is negative x plus 1. Okay? So that's one of the solutions. And let's go ahead and take a look at the other solution. Why? Because this was just assuming that f1 is equal to 0. Let's go ahead and use the second case, which is f of negative 1 equals 0. If f of negative 1 is equal to 0, then you get the following. Let's rewrite the equation one more time. Isn't that fun? You just keep writing it. Okay. Now I'm going to replace, last time remember, now this should also help you. We replace y with 1 and we got something helpful because we used f of 1 being 0. Now what do you think we're going to do? We're going to replace y with negative 1. Obviously, right? That should be kind of obvious. So this should give us f of x minus 1 x times negative 1 is minus x equals f of x times f of y, which is f of negative 1. But we know that f of negative 1 is 0 because we assumed it if f of negative 1 is 0. If this is 0, then the right-hand side will be 0, the left-hand side will be 0, and then from here we get f of x minus 1 equals x. If you replace x with x plus 1, you get f of x equals x plus 1 as the second solution. What was the first one? Negative x plus 1. The second one is x plus 1. So we have two solutions for this functional equation. These are all the solutions because we considered all the cases. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.